Happy Monday, friends. This week, we are enjoying Bisbee, Arizona, and I can't wait to share some of my favorite spots with you. Come join me. Located in beautiful Cochise County, only 11 miles from the U.S.-Mexico border, the town of Bisbee is situated just over a mile high in elevation in the heart of the Mule Mountains. And these Mule Mountains proved to be a perfect spot for gold, silver, and copper mining in the late 19th century. And as a result, the boomtown of Bisbee was officially established in 1880. And as we get started on our Bisbee adventure today, I want to take a moment to thank Discover Bisbee for sponsoring this week's post. For complete details on things to do, including shopping, dining, nightlife, and so much more, make sure to visit discoverbisbee.com and download your official visitor guide. When you're in Bisbee, you really are Bisbee. So come be yourself, be inspired, be refreshed. Come with me and let's be Bisbee for a while. The massive success of the mining operations here continued through the early 1900s, but a steady decline in both mining and the population struck this area by the mid-20th century. Bisbee then shifted its focus to tourism and the arts, and the cultural renaissance of this area is still going strong. In fact, both USA Today and Sunset Magazine have ranked Bisbee as the number one historic town in America in recent years. We'll make our first stop just before we head into the heart of historic downtown Bisbee. The Lavender Pit is a former open copper pit and it stretches over 300 acres and 900 feet deep. Before ceasing operations in 1974, over 600,000 tons of copper was produced here. And turquoise was also a byproduct of this mining activity. In fact, Bisbee turquoise, known as Bisbee blue, is among the finest in the world. One of the most popular things visitors do when they come to Bisbee is take a tour of the old Copper Queen Mine. Now, this is a wonderful way to see firsthand how mining operations once were run here. So let's put on our hard hats and headlamps and go for an adventure. The Queen Mine Tour is located off the historic Old Bisbee exit in the southeast corner of Bisbee. And inside the building, you'll find the Discover Bisbee Visitor Center, well stocked with local maps and brochures to help you plan the rest of your visit. This tour is so popular, I'd recommend purchasing your tickets in advance. And the one hour tour begins as you get outfitted with your own hard hat, yellow slicker, and miner's headlamp before heading out the back door to the mine entrance. Once outside, you go over the safety briefing and then your skilled guide leads the way as you head 1,500 feet into the mine for an authentic experience as you learn about the techniques, skills, and dangers of what it was really like to work underground here. When the Bisbee Mines finally closed in 1975, the local mines had produced over 8 billion pounds of copper, over 77 million ounces of silver, and nearly 3 million ounces of gold. Taking the Queen Mine Tour is like taking a step back in time. The tour guides are experienced miners, and on my recent visit, our wonderful guide John shared the fascinating history of this mine in a way that was informative and fun for everyone. I called a shoot tapper. He'd pull this gate open and that muck would drop down there. After exploring multiple areas inside this mine, it's time to head back out. And on sunny days, it definitely takes a minute for your eyes to adjust back to the light after being surrounded in the mine's darkness. Once you've finished your tour, head back inside and look at the historic exhibits with a new understanding. And if you want to take a piece of mining history home with you, 
There are many mined rocks you can purchase here. After your Copper Queen mine tour, head over to the Bisbee Mining and Historical Museum. This is the perfect next stop on your Bisbee adventure. This wonderful museum was one of the first permanent Smithsonian exhibit affiliates. And the museum offers an interactive trip back in time as you learn Bisbee's important role in the industrialization of America. Here, you get up close views of some magnificent minerals. And interestingly, countless incredible Bisbee specimens, including many from the Copper Queen Mine, can also be found at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. The museum is open daily from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. And the volunteers here are always eager to answer your questions. On my most recent trip, museum volunteer Buck shared many fascinating Bisbee facts that I wasn't even previously aware of. Make sure to add the Bisbee Mining and Historical Museum to your next Bisbee visit. And for our next adventure, we're heading just off Main Street to try something that's entirely new to me. We are at the Hatchet House here in Bisbee, and I am so excited to be here with Penny. Now, is it Penny or Hatchet Penny? It is Hatchet Penny. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I am one of like 12 kennies in town. So I, there's a magic Kenny Bang Bang, who's the magician. Uh -huh. There's the guy who runs the smoke shop. His name's Kenny, our mayor is his name, Kenny Bang Bang. I've visited Bisbee many times, and um, I've never actually heard of or seen the Hatchet House. So could you share a little bit about how long you've been here, what brought you here? Yeah, we opened up back in uh, April, and um, there wasn't a single excellent place in Cochise County when we opened up. And me and my best friend, Magic Kenny Bang Bang, in Tucson when I lived there all the time and we would throw in my yard when I moved down here and I, it's a great thing to do okay. so it, there's no darts in town because it's the only place you could throw something <laughs> so I was like I saw a need and I filled it <laughs> It's from anyone from the age of 10 until 84. I, we had an 84 year old lady who got ten years. She came and wanted to throw. So it's it's really for everybody. It's a great stress reliever, and it's it's just a lot of fun. You go up over your shoulder just like this. You just give it a throw. Give it a toss. That's all it is. <laughs> How impressive! Seeing what you just did, I am more than a little <laughs> intimidated. But do you think I can give it a try? Yeah. So we have a, a Facebook page, we have an Instagram, and we also have our website, bisbeehatchethouse.com. It's a great place to get a hold of us. We have a phone number, has our address located down here in the legendary Brewery Gulch of Bisbee, right next to the oldest bar in town, St. Elmo's. So it's we're in a great location. We do walk-ins uh, Thursdays through Sundays after 2 o'clock, and we take reservations for any time of the week. So as long as you give me a heads up, I will be here, and we will have you sticking axes in that board right there. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Um, I was a first timer today, but it is not going to be my only time. We're going to be throwing more of these here, I can tell.
The Bisbee Hatchet House has a wonderful staff, a wonderful atmosphere. Make sure to check it out when you're in town. Now that we've built up an appetite, where can you eat in Bisbee? Well, the answer is everywhere. For something casual and delicious, I'd visit Bisbee's table. Get anything on the menu, but make sure to order the bacon and dates. You can thank me later. Locals and visitors alike will tell you to make a reservation at Cafe Roca. It is a favorite spot. And if you're in the mood for pizza, hit up the Screaming Banshee. Or grab a drink at St. Elmo, the oldest bar in Arizona. And the Bisbee Social Club is a popular spot to grab a cocktail. You can get your caffeine fix at Bisbee Coffee Company. I go for the honey lavender latte myself. For sweet treats, make sure to visit Patisserie Jackie on Main Street. Everything here is perfection. I even went back twice for the lavender Earl Grey tart and lemon bars. From wine tasting to olive oil tasting to gelato tasting, there's something for everyone here. When it comes to breakfast, my personal favorite spot is the Bisbee Breakfast Club. The food here is exceptional and so is the service. My server Mitzi made me feel like family from the moment I walked in and the atmosphere here is a wonderful Americana throwback. And just outside of the Bisbee Breakfast Club is the historic Erie Street. Now over a century ago, much of Bisbee's population lived in this Lowell area, but the development of the Lavender Pit forced much of this area's population to move. However, Erie Street here was saved by business owners and locals who have created a wonderful outdoor museum of sorts that can't be missed here. There's another historic spot located nearby I'd check out, especially if you're a baseball fan. The local Bisbee Baseball Stadium, Warren Ballpark, has hosted a number of professional teams and the stadium predates Chicago's Wrigley Field by nearly five years. It was built in 1909 by the Arizona Mining Company, and it may be the oldest baseball stadium still in use. Now, I can't say for sure, but I've heard rumors that even uh, Babe Ruth played right here. Located just above the historic post office, Arizona's oldest library, the Copper Queen Library, was named the best small library in America in 2019. This library was established in 1882 and it's still going strong after more than 140 years. There's also wonderful shopping in Bisbee. Get handmade soaps at Bisbee Soap and Sundry or purchase ceramics and sculptures at the Subway Gallery. I could spend all weekend eating and shopping my way through Bisbee. Visit one of the gem and jewelry stores here or explore the incredibly rich and diverse art scene at one of Bisbee's many art galleries. When it comes to vintage finds and antiques, Bisbee has it all. I loved perusing the goods at Bitchin' Pickens, which was a buffet of one-of-a-kind antiques and vintage clothing that I definitely wanted to stuff in my suitcase. And the owner, Sarah, also has another business here in town I can't wait to share with you. For those of you who have been following my adventures since the very beginning, you know Flying Dawn Marie actually started solely as an aerial blog to share with my students and friends. And today I feel like I am back home in my happy place. I am at the Airy with Sarah, the owner, and we're going to get a little taste of what the aerial community has here in Bisbee. We currently offer aerial silks, pebble beach lira. We also have stage pole classes, uh, flamenco dancing, yoga, and other forms of dance here. So, so a little something for everyone. A little bit for everyone. When you walk yeah. through these doors. Yeah. I know you have a tight-knit community of area residents here in Bisbee that you work with, but for those of us that are visiting, um, how could we experience this for ourselves? Well, one thing we'd love to do here is if you're coming to Bisbee and you have a party, maybe it's a birthday party, a bachelorette, or a bachelor party, we've had bachelor parties here too, you're welcome to come on in. We'll schedule a private lesson with you. You'll get to experience what the silks are like. You can even try out some of the other apparatus. And uh, yeah, we love to host little private parties. That is awesome. And what's the best way to get in touch with you? So the best way to get in touch is just to email me. It's simple. It's bisbeairy. That's A-E-R-I-E at gmail.com. We're also on the Instagram at the Airy Movement Studio. Um, so yeah, reach out to us. We'll make sure to 
share that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And of course, I had to take a moment to get in the air here for myself. And to all my dear aerialist friends, the Aerial Movement also offers wonderful aerial retreats here. And even if you're not an aerialist, you can still check out dance or yoga classes here. Now, where do you stay to enjoy all that Bisbee has to offer? Well, the good news is there are so many wonderful accommodations here. In fact, every visit, Nate and I try to pick a new spot to stay at. This trip, we're enjoying the El Dorado Suites Hotel. This historic property has been welcoming guests since 1914, and it's just steps away from Main Street's restaurants, shops, and galleries. Our two-bedroom suite was incredibly spacious with a separate sitting area and a full kitchen to enjoy. The entire space is over 850 square feet, plenty of room for both Nate and I. Our king-size bed was extra comfy, and I love a hotel room with a walk-in closet. A real highlight here is the large veranda, the perfect spot to enjoy sunrise early in the morning or to check out the Main Street nightlife below. Another historic property here is the Inn at Castle Rock. Not only is this the oldest hotel in Bisbee, I'm also told it's one of the oldest wooden structures still running a business in the state of Arizona. And in the lobby of this beautiful property, you can see the old mine shaft and the Castle Rock well from 1877. There are many wonderful hotels here in Bisbee, but there are also plenty of special Airbnbs here too. In fact, right next door to the Inn at Castle Rock is the Castle Rock Casita, which makes for a lovely romantic getaway right on Main Street in the heart of historic Bisbee. Both the Mermaid Castle and the Pythian Castle, which originally opened its doors in 1904, are also popular Airbnb options here. From Bisbee's beautiful and historic buildings and architecture, the museums, the galleries, and the dining, there really is something for everyone to enjoy. And if you haven't seen my full Be Active Bisbee video, uh, make sure to check it out. I loved exploring with this company. There's something extra special about seeing the town with a local guide, and I loved taking the OK walking tour. But you can take golf cart city tours, hiking tours, or go wine tasting too. And my favorite activity is probably renting e-bikes from Be Active. This town is a mile high, so there's no faster way to zip around and see the sights here. And just a friendly reminder, if you're not riding a bike, you'll be walking a lot here. These historic streets of Bisbee were designed before automobiles became popular, and Bisbee is famous for its stairs. Every year on the third Saturday of October is the Bisbee 1000, or the Great Stair Climb, where people from all over the country come to take on the town's four and a half mile staircase course. This definitely isn't an exhaustive list of what you can enjoy in Bisbee. There's so much more, but it is all I could fit into one weekend. I guess that just means on my next visit, there's plenty for a part two. And hopefully this is a good start to encourage you to check out this wonderful town for yourself. Thank you so much for joining me this week in beautiful Bisbee, Arizona. Now make sure to check out Discover Bisbee for your Bisbee adventures at discoverbisbee.com and check out my blog post at flyingdonmarie.com for more information on the spots I visited today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. And until next week, I hope you find adventure and encouragement wherever you go. Bye.